we also developed a one billion big data database combined with, in, with uh, artificial intelligence. Today, I'm gonna to speak to this guy about how using mobile phone roaming data and credit card spending data can help a destination bring in more money per visitor. Did you realize that one country that you didn't think was spending a lot was actually spending a lot more, or maybe one country was spending a lot less, and then th that made it worth it for you to go and market to that destination more because they were bringing in more value than you otherwise realized? Definitely. We, I mean, to buy the data, to track all the, the roaming, to pay for the credit card data, that costs money, and to have people to analyze it. Do you feel that the results that you've seen makes up for the cost of doing those things? It's a good question. When I was the, the, the president of the tourism board of the city of Buenos Aires, I prepared uh, that kind of, of service to the visitors of Buenos Aires, providing an app where if you set the dates you were going to stay, you were going to stay in Buenos Aires and the preferences, like a mega searcher, was designing an, ag an agenda of activities day by day, even with very, very specifically, like you like opera, well, you have to go to Cologne Theater because La Traviata is going to be performing there while you stay there and you click here and you can get the tickets. And imagine, that was like eight years ago. Imagine now what you can do with, with, with big data. We also developed a one billion big data database combined with, in, with uh, artificial intelligence. So I think now- What did you do with that? What, what, what did you do with that? With that, basically with those billion uh, data, that was very specific about where the uh, visitors from every country prefer to, to, to visit different areas of Buenos Aires, at what day of the week, at what time of the week, due to cell phone antennas that were providing us all the information. Okay, then so you we, track them. They didn't answer a survey. You were just tracking their movements. We were tracking their movements by, uh, of course, everything was anonymous. Uh, but we were tracking their movements with the, the cell phone's antenna. So we have two years of track record of their movements through uh, uh, um, cell phone's antennas. And then we combine that with uh, credit card postnet's information. So we knew if Brazilians on Wednesdays in the morning were, were, were they, and we knew that for them buying leather, Argentinian leather, was very attractive. So for the, for the local businessmen, well, it was an opportunity to offer very aggressive and special, special prices on Wednesday morning, and it worked. Believe me, it worked. Wow. So, so that seems to me always like, that's like the wild west of tourism, where cell phone roaming data, where people go, and the credit card data, what they're spending. Because sometimes they're going places, but they're not spending. Exactly. And other times they're spending, but not maybe going very far. So when you, where those two things intersect, and then the question is, what you do about it what kind of offers you then make to enhance the spending make it even easier and it sounds like you really tapped into this exactly uh, initially the, we we did it offering this platform that was very well received more than 150 business, local businessmen came to the presentation of the platform and started using the platform but now we can give an, we, we can we can now have another step and, and we are work and i'm working with the, 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 the city of Buenos Aires for that, because now we can be proactive offering information to the visitors, not only to the, to the local businessmen, but to the visitors. So, okay, we know you Chileans love Palermo at night. Okay, like proactively, if you, because we have a, body, a, a WhatsApp bot, mm -hmm. so if you are connected to the uh, Buenos Aires bot, you will receive a, okay, you are in uh, Palermo Soho, Okay, be aware that in half an hour, you will have like a special party or like a special pro local beer promotion, whatever. Not only to, to provide the information they are in the search of and promote and, and make them spend more money because bottom line, but also, also to be much more efficient on the time you are in a city that you don't know. I got a question for, I got two actually. One. Did the data show that once you knew where people were going and where they were spending and you were able to inform the merchants, could you see that across the board you lifted visitor spending 
because of these things that you were able to change. So the yes. average visitor spend went up. Yeah, we saw it. It's not a, a correlation. It's not always a cost. It's not a, so it's not easy to to know if that increase was due to the to the campaigns. But for example, and one very interesting case. Domestic tourism in Buenos Aires is very important, no? from all the provinces that came to Buenos Aires for buying. And we detected that one of the stuff they like more to buy when they come to Buenos Aires was perfumes. Like, they don't have perfumes in their pharmacies in, in, in the other provinces of Buenos Aires. So, wow. And so we got in touch with the biggest chains of pharmacies, and they started offering like, okay, if you are like from Cordoba and you show us your ID, you have a 10% discount for, for perfumes. Wow. And, and, they, and they started selling more and more perfumes and Cordoba uh, visitors were buying in these promotions. But, and imagine now that you can send them, if they open their WhatsApp, you can send them proactively a message. Okay. So did you also, did, sorry to interrupt you, did you also use this same tool to alleviate congestion and overcrowding by blasting p certain groups of people in crowded areas with offers to go to less crowded areas? Well, interesting, we did it not through the tourism um, entity, but to the transportation, uh, Secretary of Transportation. They had, they feel all the, they were in a, in a close association with Waze, with Waze, the, 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 the app. Uh, so basically for the locals and the domestic visitors who use cars so we can distribute the traffic according to the, the information we had. Not with international visitors but because almost none of them rent a car to visit Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course that is something we like, Buenos Aires we work hard to be a smart city and I think uh, uh, we now have like a very interesting platform to trigger that with, through in uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Now, if you did the job right in the last five to seven years, you are ready now to trigger the experience of locals, uh, merchants, and visitors with in uh, artificial intelligence. Well, you, I mean, to buy the data, to track all the, the roaming, to pay for the credit card data, that costs money, and to have people to analyze it, do you feel that the results that you've seen makes up for the cost of doing those things? It's a good question. Um, maybe, maybe not as efficient as I would thought it was going to be. Not many merchants and not many users uh, took advantage of this, apart from these very specific cases. Um, even though the data remains there, two year, two year of of the universe of data is a huge information that will be relevant for the following years because, right. uh, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't change that much in the, uh, the, what they do and we have two years of information. So I, he, I think now it's time to take really advantage of that and for me it's about that. It's about everything, what I really passionate about and I really love of urban tourism is the possibility of connecting locals with visitors. Did you notice some extreme differences between where different nationalities, Definitely. or between or between men and women, and or young people and old people, where they liked to go at what time of day? Def definitely, and not only between, I would, I, would, I don't know, Americans visiting Buenos Aires uh, in comparison with Russians visiting Buenos Aires but between Chileans and Brazilians. So mm -hmm. it, it was totally different what they prefer regarding food, regarding shopping, regarding architecture. So one of the things we did, of course, was cross-checking promotions of what they, like, well, we were promoting in Brazil what it was not obvious for them that was there. And what we do, we did it also was like a, like a, 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 a a research of what were the most successful and best rated local experiences that were not very popular. So we right. started we started promoting those. They, there was a possibility to offer very good experiences with high level of satisfaction that were not very well known. 
and we started spreading out to those countries according to the preferences we detected. Okay, did you visit this? Come and see this. This is unique. And look at how, how much people appreciate these experiences. That might be for you. And, and I can imagine another thing that maybe happened is, like, let's say that one nationality, they like to stay in cheap hotels. So maybe you're thinking, ah, they're not big spenders, but they like to save money in the hotels so they can buy a lot of stuff when they get there or spend a lot of money on eating. So maybe you, did you realize that one country that you didn't think was spending a lot was actually spending a lot more, or maybe one country was spending a lot less, and then that made it worth it for you to go and market to that destination more because they were bringing in more value than you otherwise realized. Definitely, one of the things that we detected like with this sociologist on, on psychologist, you, it, because we also got in touch with them in the hotels, not in the airports, if they allowed us, was, okay, I came with a daily budget of, let's say, $1,000. But then I realized that I could have the same experience because Argentina, you know, the economic crisis and prices in, 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 in international currencies changes every day. Let's say I, could, I realized that instead of 1000 I could spend 800 but I didn't save, I didn't save those 200. I was so happy in Buenos Aires that I decided to spend those $200 doing other experiences, improving the kind of restaurants uh, that I was in, in, that were originally in my budget. Uh, and for that, like, okay, how am I gonna spend those 200 that were supposed to be saved because I, I can save those $200? And again, that marginal information will make a big difference on how efficient are those $200 that you didn't thought you were going to spend.